tell you, you got the scuffling Giants wrapping up their road trip with a three-gamer in Denver. Bottom of the third, one man on Rockies already leading three to nothing. Two outs, Noah Lowry facing Todd Green and Green Jackson. Two run homer to left. The Rockies leading five nothing. Green's third big one of the year. Now, top of the six. This is interesting. Giants down seven for Ray Durham at bat. Lines one to right. Giants appear to have runners at first and second. But wait a minute. Look at this. They are hot. The first base up, Laz Diaz, had called Michael Tucker out, thinking the line drive hit him. Well, Tucker and the first base coach, Luis Pujols, arguing with Diaz, you're not going to win. There's another look at it. They're irate, and Tucker certainly appears to have jumped over the ball. But you know what? Never going to win that argument. The Rockies win it 9-4. to four. As Jim Lang used to say, Matt Clement, John Garland, Javier Vasquez, and Don Trell Willis all starting on Tuesday night. You add up the records, and you get 22-2. and two. So we bring in Harold Reynolds. Which of these four surprise starters will finish the season the best? The D-Train in L.A. looking to become the NL's first eight-game winner. For pitchers under the age of 24, only four besides Willis won their first seven starts in the last 90 years. Fernando Valenzuela was one of them. And you'll note a lot of similarities when you look at the, the two deliveries here. And coincidentally... Willis pitching in L.A. Tuesday night, facing Jeff Kent, first inning, already in trouble. Second and third, and it's a two-run single. All right, Kent, three for five, makes it 2-0 L.A. The D-Train gives up three earned on seven hits and six. Two batters later, it's Almedo signs. Juan Pierre, little help, please. It's not there. Signs three for four. Before Tuesday, Willis had given up seven runs in 50 innings. In the first inning against the Dodgers Tuesday night, he gave up four runs. That's an only one inning. We go to the eighth. Cesaris Turris on fire. Doubles to left. Two more runs score. Is Turris five for six? L.A. snaps a three-game losing streak. They scale the fish 14 to five. Chavez Ravine. It's Dontrell's first loss of the year. He drops to seven and one. What about Matt Clement, the Red Sox in Oakland? Clement trying to get to five and zero. Oh. Bottom one facing former Red Sox great Scott Hatterberg to third, and it's current Red Sox great Bill Miller. Coming up with a top lane nominee ends the inning, but Clement allowed five runs on six hits and five and two third. Got the no decision. Three three in the sixth. Matt Manti comes in. Can get out of it. Eric Burns scores Matt Watson. This is four three and Manti in the dugout afterward not happy about not getting the job done. I hate this glove. They're loaded in the eighth. Johnny Damon against the Dicano and Cohen. Red Sox down five three. Hatterberg at first issues. One run scores. It's a five four game. Next up, Edgar Anteria versus Houston Street. To right, and it goes right by Burns. Three runs come in. It's a four-run Boston eighth. The A's defense imploding. Oakland has now lost 10 of its last 11 against Boston. 7-5 the final here. Red Sox 2-3 and three now on their six-game road trip. Now let's check in on John Garland. The White Sox taking on the Rangers. Garland looking to go 8-0 and oh for the Pale Hose. What makes him so good? Well, one of the things is he locates the ball so very well, or has been this season. The inside pitch to Soriano. Just playing catch with A.J. Przinski. Soriano rounds out 4-3. to three. And then watch him facing Lance Nix here. Przinski now setting up high, so Garland is going to elevate. Bullseye. He gone. Another good reason? <laughs> facing Hank Blaylock. Getting ahead of the hitters. First strike. No, he strike one's always good. Then he winds up getting him. Swing it. So Garland doing a good job of mixing up everything and changing speeds. Watch him here. 87 mile per hour breaking ball. Now he is going, isn't he? That got Blaylock, and there goes Alfonso Soriano. 79 miles per hour right there. So Garland, seven innings of work. He only gave up uh, two earned runs. A.J. Brzezinski gave him the offensive support he needed. In the sixth inning, 3-2 Sox with one on. Sox going to win it 5-2. So Garland is the first eight-game winner in the Major Leagues this season. Now the Diamondbacks and the Astros and Javier Vasquez, who was a mess last season, finding the change out to the desert is very, very helpful. Four and over his previous five starts. He gets Morgan Ensberg in the first inning right there. Worked seven, gave up uh, seven hits along the way. Top of the second, Roy Oswald strikes out Chris Snyder swinging. Oswald looking good. And Oswald forcing Royce Clayton into the 6-4-3 double play in the top of the seventh inning, protecting a 1-0 lead. Now to the top of the ninth, it's now Houston 3-0. And Alex Centrone facing Brad Ridge pops it up. Morgan Ensberg squeezes it. Houston wins by a final count of 3-0. So Oswald goes eight, gives up five hits, and eight strikeouts along the way. Uh, scratch with a strained left oblique. 
Bottom of the third scoreless game, Smoltz facing Mark Loretta. Softly, but look at Smoltz. He is all over the place trying to get to the bag. Loretta is safe. But John is not Fred Astaire on that particular play. Loretta, by the way, on a serious note, did hurt his hand sliding into the bag. Some kids in the outfield out there emulating John Smoltz. Imitation, the sincerest form of flattery. Top of the eighth, Braves leading one to nothing. Andrew Jones facing Otsuka. Takes him deep to left. His tenth of the year, the Braves leading two to nothing. So we move to the ninth. Bottom half. Padres down two to one. They're on the corners. Bill Nevin is at the plate. He chops one to short. Rafael Fercal has to wait for it to come down. He gets Nevin at first, but former brave Ryan Klesko is able to score from third, tying the game at two. And then it's Khalil Green with the bases loaded and one out. The game-winning single to left field, scoring Brian Giles from third. Padres another comeback win, three to two over the Braves. Now the Blue Jays and the Twins, Johan Santana, the book on him, get to him early. And that's exactly what the Toronto Blue Jays did Tuesday. First inning, first batter, in fact, Alex Rios leads off the game with a ringing double off the wall in right center field. And that sets the table for the next batter. Reed Johnson, the single to left. Rios, plenty of speed. He scores, and it's 1-0 Jays. Just two batters later. How about Vernon Wells? That's cranked. He hammers one to left. His sixth of the season, 3-0 Blue Jays after the first inning. Fast forward top five, Blue Jays up 3-2. Second and third for Shea Hillenbrand, a single to center off Santana. Two more runs score, and it's 5-2 Toronto. First time Santana has allowed more than four earned runs since May 23rd of 2004. Yes, he is human, the defending Cy Young Award winner. Top of the sixth, one uh, more problem for Santana as Orlando Hudson takes him deep to left. Santana giving up seven earned runs and five and a third. The Blue Jays win it 10-3. They got another Santana, Irvin Santana, Angels uh, rookie, taking on the Tribe. Actually, he was signed under the name Johan Santana. It turned out he wasn't actually named Johan. He was Irvin, and he was also 10 months older than they thought. But, hey, that happened. First inning, not a good Major League debut for Irvin Santana. First batter, Grady size, more triples into the gap in right center. Tribe came in with the lowest batting average in the Major Leagues, 233, but they are teeing off on Santana. Coco Crisp double down the first baseline. Sizemore scores. Indians with a triple and a double. Their first two batters. Travis Hafner singles. And yes, can he actually give up the cycle to his first four major league hitters? We need a home run from Ben Broussard, please. Yard by Broussard. Two-run shot, number three. And there it is. Irvin Santana, first pitcher since 1969 to allow a cycle to the first four batters in a game or, in this case, of his career. And he did it on only 10 pitches in the fourth half. Two-run shot is fifth. He was three for four. Santana allowed six runs on eight hits and four. He said afterward, I've been waiting for this day. Next time, I will do better. And here's the game within a game. The Mets closer, Braden Looper, has left. He's hitting 360 against him with three home runs. So in the top of the night, 2-1 Mets, Willie Randolph calls on Dai Sung Koo to close. But Ken Griffey Jr. singles, and the tying run is on with one out. Next batter, Koo walking Adam Dunn. The go-ahead run is now on as well, so Willie's seen enough. Koo is out. Looper's in facing Joe Randa. <laughs> this is a bad memory for him. Joe Randa hit a walk-off homer off Looper back on April 4th, opening day, giving the Reds a 7-6 victory. But, you know, got to be like a kicker. These relief guys, you got to have that short memory going. Fast forward to the present. Looper facing Randa, and he flies him out to center field. Carlos Beltran puts the squeeze on it. Pinch runner William Bergola tags and goes to third. So now you got a two-out situation. Runners on the corners, 3-2 count. Austin Kearns at the plate, and Looper gets a look. So the Mets go on to win it by a final count of 2-1, Looper's 10th save of the season. Brew crew in Washington. Nationals looking for their fourth straight win behind Claudio Vargas. First pitch of the game to Brady Clark. Oh, the man named Brady had a huge night, 4 for 5. Third career leadoff home run. The home run is fifth of the year, 1-0 Milwaukee. Same inning, El Caballo. Carlos Lee, broken bat, barrel coming into the stands. The guy in the front row about to get hit, but suddenly the fan in the second row leaps in front and saves the day. The man he saves, Nationals GM Jim Bowden. Wow. Unbelievable. 
Can a brother get some season <laughs> tickets? I'm telling you. Seventh seven inning, seven. Wes Obermuller working on a perfect game. Gets Brad Wilkerson. Jeez. Next up, Jamie Carroll. And Obermuller shakes off his catcher for the first time in the game. He settled for giving up two hits over eight for his first win. Groupers at 8-2. Obermuller said, I won't ever second-guess my catcher again. I'll tell you that. Seattle looking for their 10th straight win. The Yankees tied with the Pirates for the most 10-game winning streaks since 1900. 27 10-game winning streaks. A win Tuesday night would make it 28 10-game winning streaks for the Bombers. Top two, first and second. Jason Giambi. Will it drop? It drops. They wave A-Rod, and the Yankees have a 2-0 lead. Top four, Tino Martinez on second. Giambi, another single. Ichiro is out there, and uncharacteristically, he has some issues. They wave uh, the Bam Tino in there. It's 3-0 New York. Top five, A-Rod. The former Mariner. Career home run number 394 is 13th this season. Top six, Giambi. How about a solo home run in a three-hit game? His fourth home run of the year, 6-0 Yankees. A shutout for Carl Pavano, the fourth of his career. He gave up just five hits. The Yankees have won 10 in a row. They went through this last season. Started 8-11. and 11. Derek Jeter got booed. He was slumping. Remember that? But starting with a game against the A's, they won eight straight to get back on track. This year, more of same with a 10-game winning streak started against Oakland and now has them two games over 500. Well, could the Royals win three straight for the first time this season? Could Jose Lima get his first win of the year? Will the Lucky Charms help? No, no, and no. Top of the third against the Orioles, 8-2 Royals. When Brian Roberts hammers it, his 11th home run, 8-3 Royals. Now top of the four, still 8-3, nice safe lead. Lima facing Rafael Palmero, and Palmero hammers it. His fourth home run of the year makes it 8-4. Now still the top of the fourth, it's now 8-5. One on for Jay Gibbons. The two-run drive to right. Gibbons, sixth home run. The Orioles coming back. It's now an 8-7 ball game. Still the top of the fourth, Serta on facing Palmero. And Palmero with a single to right. Second hit of the inning for him. Melvin Moore scores. The Orioles take a 9-8 lead. Palmero 4 for 5, 5 RBI in a 12-8 Baltimore victory. Bobby Abreu on fire. Last eight games has scored and driven in a run in each game. He's got seven home runs, six multi-hit games, all while batting a scorching 593. They just cannot get Bobby Abreu out these days. And he would be facing Jeff Supon on Tuesday night. And Abreu, we said he was hot immediately. Bottom one. Takes Supon Yard, his 11th, his eighth home run in nine games. He's driven in a run and scored a run in nine straight games. one nothing Phillies. Bottom eight. Fills up 7-4 Mike Lieberthal. Fouls one off. Albert Pujols giving chase. Pujols can't come up with it, but keep your eye on the fan. He wants to give Pujols a hug. Albert Really not into it. Visibly upset. And then just scolds the fan. Gives him a piece of his mind. Chews the guy out a little bit. Here it is again. Fan grabs Pujols and Albert doesn't like it. He kept his cool though. Cardinals lost the game 7-5. But Peter Gammons, we have another fan player incident. Sox are off to baseball's best start even without this guy. Frank Thomas. The big hurt recovering from off-season ankle surgery, but he began a rehab stint Tuesday in Ottawa, playing for the Charlotte Knights. Not bad, two for three, a walk. Ottawa did beat Charlotte nine to eight. Cubs in Pittsburgh, and it's all about Derek Lee. Eight home runs, 22 driven in in his last 25 games. Top seven, down 3-1. Right all over the 3-2 pitch from Josh Fogg. His 11th home run of the season, and Lee has pulled the Cubs. Within a run, it's 3-2. Top nine, Jose Mason. Pirates have won the last 40 games when leading after eight innings. That says a lot about this guy. Done well. Jerry Harrison Jr. is over there on third. Mesa with first base open. Going to go after Lee. Could have put him on. Instead, they pitched to him. What were you thinking? Two-run shot is 12. Lee was four for four. Drove in all four Chicago runs. Mesa's first blown save since August 19, 2004. Cubs win 4-3 ringing off the hook for the top play, so here they are. Number 10, double raise on the Tigers. You know, Rondell White is the pride of Gray Georgia, but he's not doing too badly for himself in Detroit as of Tuesday night. Bottom of the 11th, tied at three, off the wall, and the Tigers walk away with a win. The phone on your head ringing? Yeah. And the Bluetooth. <laughs> Gotta have that. Number nine, Sonic Spurs, Manu Ginobili. 
at a career playoff high 39, and the Spurs beat the Sonics to win game five. How about the Angels and the Indians at Orlando Cabrera? Nice diving stop, and then the flip to second to record the out. Good glove work, good presence. Number seven, the Pacers and Pistons, Chauncey Billups, tips it up to Rasheed, defending that belt. We'll have more from this game coming up later in top plays. That's called a tease in the business. Ah, what a bump. <laughs> Number six comes in the Pirates, Aramis Ramirez. Diving stop and then the peg to first. Once again, cat-like reflexes down in the hot corner over there. Ramirez with the great stop and throw. Hey, Fred, take the kids to Burger King. Number five, you know, they got the Star Wars toys now. Oh. They've been delivered in an armored car guarded by stormtroopers and Darth Vader. These are some heavily, heavily guarded onion rings. I mean, you're not getting in there without proper ID. But the Star Wars toys available at uh, Burger King near you. And probably a lot of other places. Rangers and the White Sox. Juan Uribe trying to get to second, but Kevin Mensch guns him down. Did you know, by the way, that he and Bruce Bochy, according to New Era, are the only two guys ever to wear a size 8 baseball cap? The guys are Mensch. Number three, Reds Mets. Ken Griffey Jr. Big Mets win at beautiful Shea Stadium. Griffey laying out. A reminder, the uh, Mets Reds 110 first pitch at Shea. Wednesday afternoon at uh, some exciting New York Mets baseball. And now number two, Blue Jays and the Twins and Jacques Jones ranging over in foul territory in right. The catch over the wall. That's called knowing your ballpark. Or Jock Jam in this case. Number one, Pacers, Pistons, Carlos Arroyo, Ben Wallace. That's a no look. Big Ben with a hair down, 19 points, 11 rebounds, three blocks. The Pistons win game five in the number one play. Sports Center's top 10 plays is brought to you by 